Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I had to edit a few settings on my end, but uh, since it's a rainy, cold day, and my initial plans to shoot a video today were shot all to heck because of the weather, I figured uh, I'd take you guys for a live drive. We're in Binghamton right now, so it's gonna take a little while to get there, but the state has started, and I guess the federal government, has started a $47 million reconstruction project of Route 17 from the town of Vestal Line to Owego, uh, where they're shifting it down to one lane on e in each direction and rebuilding one side at a time uh, as the summer allows. Let me, uh, I have to switch providers real quick. I have my phone connected to the wrong provider. <clears throat> Alright, I switched providers to the correct provider, and uh, we're driving back uh, up to the highway, and like I said, rainy day, I had plans to shoot a video today, but uh, those are all shot, so I figured I'd do a live stream with you guys, and take you on a trip down the uh, reconstruction project in Owego, Appalachian. Uh, I have a long way to get, a little bit of a ways to go to get there, so I figured I'd get the party going early, take you guys with me. Let me know how the stream quality is down in the comments. I also activated a tip jar that I've never tried before, and supposedly if you put a tip in, it does some sort of animation and throws some coins in the jar or something. I, I, don't, I don't really know. This is... This is new to me streaming software, so I'm testing it out. I put a fancy border around it. I uh, did a bunch of stuff for it, so... The background looks weird, says my wife. <laughs> so I put a fancy background in. I put a tip jar in the bottom. Uh, this, this streaming software has capabilities that are way beyond me. And the reason I have it is because I'm going to be doing a live stream of the solar eclipse from four different cities on August 8th, or uh, April 8th, but I haven't set that up yet. I haven't set up the, the thumbnail for it. I haven't set the event up yet, so we'll see when it, uh, we'll see when it gets closer. So keep an eye out for that soon. I didn't get that. Could you try again? I know you didn't get that, Siri. Siri, shut up. <laughs> so yeah, if you're just joining us, welcome to the live stream. Gonna take you guys uh, for a little bit of a joyride through the $47 million reconstruction project on Route 17. And like I said, it'll take a minute to get there. But once we do, I uh, hope you guys enjoy the ride. <clears throat> oh yeah, so my wife has a good point. The project we're going through right now, if memory serves me correctly, this was a $500 million reconstruction project of where 17 and 81 come together. And this has been completed for a few years now, but this was a big project as well. Let me know down in the comments where you guys are watching from today. It's cold, rainy, and overall just kind of gross in the Binghamton area today. Let me know how the weather is where you are. Passing exit 72, McGat Street and Prospect Street. This exit used to be right here where that blue sign is, but it was moved further down the road to allow for easier, uh, easier switching of traffic. Carson says, yo, Port Dick here. I'll be going through Port Dick in just a minute, I think. I think the exit, uh, the next exit for Johnson City, I think that's technically Port Dickinson. I could be wrong. <clears> Thank <throat> you. 
<laughs> so if you guys remember correctly, or if I remember correctly, Route 17 from the Vestal Town Line to Owego was in really poor, uh, really poor condition. Car Carson says I'm near exit five. Okay, okay. So that's that's 81, not this road. But anyway, Route 17 from the Vestal Town Line through Owego has been in kind of rough condition for a while. They've paved it a number of times, uh, and it just never seems to hold up well. And this time they're doing a method called crack and see where they have this big machine go down the road and essentially drop a big anvil on it to break apart the old concrete roadbed that's under the asphalt. And then they uh, pave over that essentially. So it kind of technically creates a new base for the roadway without having to do a ton of manual labor uh, of digging it up entirely. Although. We'll see how that holds up, because in my opinion, the road just needs to be taken down to dirt and start, you know, and start over with it. <clears throat> Passing the Oakdale Mall exit, exit number 70N. <clears throat> if you guys have been following the channel, you'll know that there's a lot of uh, development going on at the mall. The inside of it hasn't really changed too much, but now it has a Dick's, a BJ's Wholesale Club. Pretty soon we're going to have a Dave and Buster. So there's been a good amount of development going on at the mall. And uh, yeah, coming up on the Endwell exit next. <coughs> Oh no, it's moving. Hello. Welcome back. Uh, looks like we had a small connection interruption there, probably switching cell towers. But anyway, yeah, so we're on 17 West right now, headed to take you guys through the reconstruction project near Appalachian. I had plans to make other videos today, but they got all shot because of the weather. <laughs> Sorry if the connection's getting a little wonky. We're uh, going through the middle of the highway here, so we're uh, sw probably switching cell sites. Originally I was going to make a video about this, but I guess because of the weather and it's supposed to be rainy for the whole week, we'll just call it a live stream and, and call it good. And uh, for the five people that are watching, let me know down in the comments uh, how the border looks here. Coming up on the Endicott Vestal exit. This portion of the highway, by the way, not this bridge, but the roadbed itself, was rebuilt re in 1999 and 2000. And essentially what they did with this was they took it down to dirt and just rebuilt the whole thing. But yeah, for the 70 of you watching, let me know where you're watching from. Currently passing through the town of Vestal. <coughs> And in the next couple minutes here, we'll be, uh, should be approaching the work area. I'm, from what I've read and seen, it's just beyond the line. And again, this project is $47 million. Eric Snow says, just past my house. Cool. Anyway, uh... $47 million project to rebuild 1786. <clears throat> and what they're going to do is take the, take the work area down to one lane in each direction 
and shift traffic over to the opposite side of the road. John Tripp says, I miss living in Binghamton. Well, you too could have this beautiful weather if you want and come back anytime. So yeah, this is going to get taken down to one lane, there's a pothole, and shifted over to the opposite side of the road. I think they have started working further up the road, but we'll, we'll see here in a minute. I don't come down this way too often, uh, but I decided to come down just for you guys to take you on a ride through a major development in the area, I guess. This part, I don't know if they're working on this part. I thought it said it was the town of Vestal Line, although I guess the town of Vestal Line is further up the road here. Here comes our first uh, work area sign here, 55 mile an hour reduced speed limit. <clears throat> Exit 66 closed starting Wednesday, 4-3, so that's tomorrow. So tomorrow the Appalachian exit will be closed. And like I said, they're going to go one lane in each direction, and the westbound side will initially be shifted over to the eastbound side. And then the following summer of 2025, the eastbound side will be shifted over to the westbound side. <clears throat> to let me know where you're watching from and uh, if we're going to talk about nerdy infrastructure stuff let me know down in the comments what big projects you have in your area right lane closed a half a mile cool here's our next sign here we're going to shift over the right lane is closing <clears throat> so yeah, I guess the part we were just on isn't too terrible, but the part between the Vestal Line and Appalachian is in really rough shape. <clears throat> I did see in the news recently that... Um, <clears throat> They've started placing the concrete dividers on the opposite side to allow traffic to shift over to the eastbound side. And you can see right here is where the crossover is going to be. So you'll cross over onto the other side and essentially, essentially share the roadway. essentially share the roadway with the eastbound side. That's a lot of concrete dividers over on the other side there. I wonder where they get that many and how many trucks, how many trucks it took to bring it all in. It'd be very interesting to know. right there actually in that yellow truck we just passed so fortunately the Appalachian exit is still open but it will be closing and on the other side there they have a sign set up that said it's two lane two lane traffic shared for the next five miles so this will actually be my last trip on this road for more than a year. These, east, uh, these westbound lanes will be closed until summer of 2025, at which point they will be shared again for that summer with eastbound traffic. <coughs> So yeah, let me know where you're watching from. I'll take you guys up the Appalachian exit here. And 
I believe this bridge we just went over is one of the ones that's going to get redecked. There's two bridges in the project that are getting redecked, according to the stories I've read. <clears throat> I was about to make a left on red there. You can make a right on red, but you can't make a left on red. So this bridge and the one behind us that goes over the river were built around 2003 or four, if I, if I, uh, the dates are getting a little fuzzy, but they're gonna repave the road back there too between the bridge decks on that exit. we're going to get back on the eastbound side here. The project does extend out to Owego, but I don't have the desire to go to Owego today, so you guys will just have to settle for this half of the project site. I love those new flashing yellow lights. Those are kind of cool. You don't have to stop anymore and wait. <clears throat> wow, these lanes are kind of narrow especially right here. So this is the part of the project where they've set up the barricade to allow for two-lane traffic. And as you can see, it's kind of constricted. We're on 17 eastbound now, Interstate 86. And they uh, paved a little bit of the shoulder over to allow for the lane to be somewhat normal. But yeah, these, uh, these concrete dividers, man, like, where do you get this many concrete dividers? And how do you bring it, like, how many trucks did you need to bring this in, you know? <clears throat> so overall, it looks like the project area is five miles long. And like I said, this is going to be going on through the end and uh, end of summer 2025, and probably into the fall. So today is the last day that traffic can use those westbound lanes on the actual roadbed, and then they're going to be shifted over to here. You can see they made an emergency pull-off area over there. <coughs> But yeah, drop me, uh, drop me some comments. Let me know what's going on in your day-to-day -day life here on the channel. And again, uh, this is brand new streaming software, so let me know how it looks on your end. I'm using Streamlabs, and there's a lot of cool things you can do with it that uh, are beyond my knowledge at the moment, but hopefully I'll add, the, add it to my knowledge base soon enough. <coughs> just crossed over into Broome County and now we're in the town of Vestal. And you can see the end of the crossover area over there. Wow, we got quite the drainage area going on over there. <coughs> well, so that was a that was a peek at the project area for you guys. And uh, I'm going to keep live streaming just for anybody who wants to hang out here on the live stream. <coughs> Currently on Interstate 86, good old Route 17, eastbound. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up. Hitting subscribe will ensure that you don't miss our four camera live stream on April 8th. We're gonna be live streaming the solar eclipse from Rochester, Syracuse, Binghamton, and New York City all in one live stream. And if knock on plastic, if everything goes well, I think it'll give you a cool insight into 
what won't happen again until the 2070s. So yeah, definitely join the live stream. I think you guys will like it. That's why I have this streaming software uh, that's new to me. It's called Streamlabs. <clears throat> and wow, the sign up here says, uh, arrive early, stay late, solar eclipse. Half the sign doesn't work right. Actually, just one digit. <clears throat> So we got the Endicott Vestal Exit coming up here. Let's play a fun game. What exit of Route 17 do you live on? Or had lived on if you moved away? Let me know down in the comments. Here comes the Endicott exit. Surprised nothing's flooded yet. It's been raining pretty hard all day. You guys are currently looking at Vestal facing south. <coughs> Years ago, they changed the exit ramp signs to say Corning instead of Elmira. Interesting little tidbit for you guys there. And for those of you who are feeling nostalgia, you'll get to see the IBM campus coming up here in a little bit. Oh boy, that left lane is, uh, oh boy, they're both under a little bit of water. There you go. Not good. It's been raining pretty much all day here and supposedly going to be rainy all week. So, not, uh, not great. Not great weather-wise. Anyway, if you're just joining the live stream at this point, we went through the $47 million reconstruction project of five miles of 1786 through Appalachian and Owego. Well, we didn't go all the way to Owego because I ain't got time for that today. But uh, yeah, we took you guys on a little, little short drive. Let me know down in the comments what you guys want to see next uh, for a live stream on uh, the channel here. And uh, yeah, the, this is DVR'd, so you can go back and look at the work area if you want to see it. But more or less, we're just hanging out on the live stream here. Testing out Streamlabs. Brand new streaming software to me anyway. Currently on McKinley Avenue, and we just drove past the IBM campus. So for now, we're we're more or less hanging out. UHS Wilson Tower, yeah, that uh, yeah, I haven't done an update on that in a while. 
So maybe that'll uh, get added to my short list of shit I need to do coming up. Stuff I need to do coming up. Oops, I said a naughty word. Anyway, uh, like I said, this whole thing's DVR'd, so if you guys want to go back and see the project area again, you're more than welcome to once this gets posted live. And uh, that's pretty much going to be the end of this live stream. Thanks for hanging out for the people that did join, and uh, make sure to drop a comment, drop a like, and a subscribe. And again, April 8th. The solar eclipse we're gonna do a live stream from four cities New York City Binghamton Syracuse and Rochester so you'll have a live window here on the channel into the solar eclipse uh, so definitely make sure to get subscribed for that I'm gonna get the live stream for that set up in the next couple days here hopefully today maybe I don't know we'll see uh, but yeah definitely definitely hit subscribe so you don't miss that live stream and we'll see you guys next time here on the channel. Thank you.